so I thought it would be a good time to give you some tips on how to deal with change and embrace uncertainty. Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff, a channel for women over 50 who are getting happy and growing younger. I think there's one or two things getting, our, getting in our way at the moment in terms of uh, increasing our happiness levels and I wanted to talk about that. If this is your first visit, you are very welcome. I'm so appreciative that you decided to drop in on us and I hope you subscribe and come back regularly because we talk about lots of great stuff. Um, but I'm gonna, I want to tell you a story today and today's a little bit different. Uh, because it's more of a personalised thing, I guess, when I'm talking about embracing uncertainty, that's for sure. Um, by now, uh, tomorrow, I think, will be the US election, and I know that lots of you are very worried about that and about the outcome of that. And in the UK, we will have learned or are about to learn whether or not we're going into another complete lockdown. So, um, there's obviously a lot hanging over us that might just be getting in the way of our positivity and happiness, which is concerning me because, as I've said to you so many times before, you can deal better with situations when you're feeling in a positive mood. So, how do you do that? Well, I want to tell you a story about how um, I used to do that with my sister. Now, those of you... Excuse me a second. Those of you who have read my book, Stitch Your Own Silver Linings, <clears throat> will know my sister, Pat. I introduced my sister, Pat, to you in Stitch Your Own Silver Linings. If you didn't read the book, my sister, Pat, we lost my sister, Pat, to cancer when she was just 46 years old. Before that, for because it was with cancer and it went on for quite some time, um, I talk about the fact that a blessing of that was that she and I were able to get closer together. And one of the things that, w that we used to do, because obviously um, she would go for tests, she would have to be tested here and tested there, we'd be waiting for the results of that. That would be a bad result or it would be a non-conclusive result and then we'd have to wait for another result and then we'd get... Um, bad news and having to deal with all of those things on an ongoing basis um, can really play havoc with your emotions obviously. So what would happen is <laughs> we would go together to an appointment and she would have to wait until a few days later and then I would get a phone call from her. Um, this has happened, can we meet? And immediately, because I was fortunate, so fortunate to be in a position to be able to do this, I could just drop everything and go and meet her and we would go back to nature. We would go and walk. Now, Pat, um, when she had to retire, she was a police officer. She was a te detective and she had to retire because of ill health she started to walk with her beautiful dog Oliver and she used to walk for miles and miles and she used to say that it cleared her head it gave her perspective all of those things that we've talked about when we talk about going back to nature and so she and I used to go and walk and I have to tell you we used to walk at a lo local beauty spot which you're going to see shortly and we would put the world to rights and I got to know her so, our relationship deepened so much. I got to know the thing, kind of things she liked, um, what she believed in, the deep things that she really believed in. We talked about all of those things and it was great. And after the walk, we would have talked through the scenarios, right, okay, this has happened. What can we do? What action can we take? And how are we going to deal with um, the out of control ness, lack of control uh, of her situation. For me, after the walk, I used to come back to meditate, and very often she would continue walking or go to a different spot and walk on her own with Oliver. 
So that's what we used to do. And it helped because we talked about things like, right, okay, what does this mean? What's the likely, um, you know, what's the positive outcome? What do we want from this? How can we achieve that? All of the things that I've talked to you about on Happy Stuff and Fluff, which is what I'm suggesting that you do now. Um, You know, tomorrow for you guys in the US, somebody's going to win the win the election it may or may not be the person you want to win change is not going to happen like that so don't worry about that it takes a while for change to happen and you will adapt this is how human human beings have stayed um you know have stayed alive and not become extinct because we are able to adapt and you will adapt Um, to the situation I mean change you can have change that you want to make yourself and I'll be talking about that next week but sometimes change is forced upon us and I think that's when um, we can be thrown into a little bit of a panic and this is what would happen with my sister but I'm telling you this story because well just to let you know that you can um, you can adapt to even the worst case scenarios like my sister did like my mother did and like my daughter Charlotte did with their cancer now if that's possible to do then it's also possible to deal with a change in uh, who becomes president and to deal with another lockdown in the UK if that happens to us Um, there's certain things that you can do and certain things that you cannot control. And it's the things that you cannot control that you have to let go. Now, as I say, my sister Pat would continue to walk on her own and I would come home to meditate, to let go of the things that we could not control. And then we would put into action the things that we talked about that we could control in order to make the situation easier. And that's what I want you to be thinking about. Tomorrow, when um, you get good or bad news in the US and um, and in the UK, if we get put back into lockdown, and if we do, I'm sure I'll be talking about it more then. But just for today, just for today, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to come with me on the walk um, that my sister and I used to do. It's a shortened version. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry it's not going to be an hour long because it used to take us about an hour and a half to walk around this place and that gave us time to uh, to focus on whatever it was that we were concerned about in terms of um, change or uncertainty okay um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on our walk come with me back to nature take a breath And let's put the world to rise. Okay, so here we are. This is a, um, it's a reservoir. It isn't a lake. And it was my back garden. You could say it was our back garden for possibly about 30 years. Before we moved to the city, this was about a two-minute drive from where we lived. And so my children were brought up playing around here. Um, We spent hours and hours at this particular place, walking, um, picnicking, all of those things. We were very lucky and blessed to have it on our doorstep. And of course, it's always there for us to go back to. But as I said to you, this is where um, my sister Pat, when she called me when something had happened that was uh, good or bad, um, it would would be, uh, I'll meet you there. At and she'd give me a time and we always knew where there was it was here because we were going to walk the reservoir and I was incredibly lucky I talked about this in Silver Linings the way things fell in my life that allowed me to be free and available at a time that she needed me to whatever time she called I was able to say yes I'll be there and so we would set off and start to and start to break down the things that were happening and look at what do we need to do now what can we do and and that's how we would spend our time walking uh, around this beautiful reservoir come on it's this way (laughs) um it's quite a dark day there in actual fact the day turned out to be a beautiful day and sunny 
we went here on this day because it was Charlotte's birthday and we wanted to remember her, obviously. We were meant to go uh, in a huge gathering of friends and family to do this, but of course, because of COVID-19, we weren't allowed to do that. So um, I think we were, we were allowed at that time to walk in six, sixes. Um, so that was why we were there on this particular day. This is where Pat and I would often stop where stop. Uh, where the ducks gathered, not to feed them, incidentally, because, as you can imagine, everybody feeds the ducks and they um, they can get to quite a big size. So it was something we never did. Uh, I didn't um, allow the children to feed these particular ducks. But Pat and I used to stop here. There's a little bench to sit on if she wasn't feeling uh, if she wasn't feeling well. But we would walk here in all weathers. I mean, sometimes the wet, the rain would drive across horizontally across this water and uh, we would walk and it takes probably about an hour and a half to go all the way around but when my sister was um, you know the the more ill she became the slower she had to walk the longer it took so sometimes it would take us two and a half hours to walk around but um, I treasure those memories now uh, when I may have grumbled as I was walking around them at the time uh, these are memories that I treasure so, yeah, it's quite still there. And just stopping to breathe in nature. And, you know, this place is always going to be there. And I think this is something that we need to think about when change is forced upon us. Because obviously there's good change and there is bad change. But when you can come to a place like this, your own favourite place that you know is there and will always be there... It's very grounding. This section here where they've built a little bridge across there because as you can see the water has, um, it's been raining an awful lot and you can see the water's overflowed onto the path, which happens quite a lot. So yeah, you can come to a place like this and it stays the same. And this is something I've said before. When you're going through a period of change, it's good to have something grounding like this that does not change. And it's also good to have, uh, to continue rituals or to have something with you the whole time um, that is familiar to you. And you have to create those moments. And this is what we did with my sister. And this is what we did with my daughter, Charlotte. You have to think of things. And of course, we've had lots of time to think about these things. Uh, think about the things that are grounding for you and that do help you to realise that there are some things that are still there for you and that do not change. So, you're, you're, you know, the floor is not falling beneath your feet or the rug being whipped out from underneath you, which it might feel like sometimes, especially if for some of you tomorrow, you don't get the president that you wanted or that you voted in. That's going to happen, obviously, to an awful lot of you. And for a day or so, you may feel like this is being forced upon you and it's something you didn't want. You have to start. You know, I'd give it 24 hours. Obviously, sometimes shock of change, the shock of change. Uh, similarly with the UK uh, full lockdown. It takes a little while to get over that news and allow yourself a little bit of time to do that. But then you have to think about, OK, so what can I do? This is it. This is the situation. We need to find a way of getting through this. And then you need to talk about it, either with your partner or your family. How are we going to? What can we do? What's in our control and what isn't? And just look at this. The colours are absolutely beautiful. So this was our grounding place. And as I say, it took uh, about an hour and a half to get round. And by the time we'd got round, we had set plans. What we needed to do what we could control, what we wanted to get out of the situation. And these were conversations that my sister and I had. And then um, she would go and continue to walk on her own. She felt that um, that was how she would then um, process everything that we talked about. And I would come home and I would meditate that's how I would process these things. We are human beings who can adapt to change. And here, when we get to this particular spot on these stones that you can see here, I always leave a flower. We always leave a flower. So 
It's a very special place for us and that's why we always lay a flower. So I know that um, was a very fast walk. Let's just go through that again. I'll just let that play again um, without talking and uh, you can appreciate a little bit of the beauty of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little sojourn into the life of Christine um, or the life and times of Christine. But I wanted to talk about that because it is the place that I want to go if ever I'm feeling, um, you know, a little bit out of sorts. And if you have a place like that, please let me know in the comments box below your special place that you go to that helps you to feel grounded. And then when you have... You know, when all the emotions that will undoubtedly be swirling around in your mind have settled, that's when you can start to think practically and think about the possibilities or the positive things that might come out of the change that happens. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. I will talk more about change and about um, embracing uncertainty as we go along. For now, I just want to say to you guys in the US, I sincerely hope that you get the president your country needs in order to heal and help you to move into the future in a healthy, prosperous and happy way. And for those of you in the UK who are likely to be going into full lockdown, let me know how I can help you. You know, if me coming on live on Facebook every single day or even live on YouTube every day would help you, let me know and I will do exactly that. Okay. Good luck to you guys in the US and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.